Well, I'm in uh, Perry, Michigan, just stopped here to get some cash for the border. So the machine is still on, everything is good, perfect. And I've been driving and thinking still about this stupid fuel problem, right? And I remember uh, when I started mentioning this problem, uh, one guy said, they had max in their fleet and what they found is that the connectors uh, the, where the fuel lines are connected to the tanks were a bit loose and that's where the air was coming in and I remember I tried that lots of sand blowing uh, the wind is coming this way and so I remember I tried that and I didn't uh, find any problem and on my the way they are set up on my truck, see I got uh, square, like D-shaped tanks, right? And that's where, you see like there's nothing here, right? These are just what's holding the... Okay, this one thing, that's just the breather tape, right? Right over there, you see two hoses. And I try, I touch them and everything is, you know, solid on the bottom one. They're not moving. And so yeah, I did it a long time ago. I checked them, everything was good. But now I decided to do it again. Yeah, this one has uh, extra connectors. You know, that one, there's nothing. Over here you have this and this. So some people were saying this is for the heater. So over here we have the same two, two, um, Two hoses, look at this one. This one, I see it's solid. I'm trying to move it, doesn't move. This one, look at this. See? See how it's moving? Like it's pretty loose. See? So that's not good. And uh, that can be the source of my problem. So I'm really gonna check it out when I when I find a shop, you know. But for now, maybe put some tape over it, and see what happens. Well, I never thought I'd be uh, back to the Vision Truck Group uh, shop, but this is uh, not Cambridge where I usually where I used to go. And then you remember, I really was not happy with the work those guys did, so. I just stopped in London, London, Ontario, uh, on the way to Woodstock and picked up this. So this is what it looks like. So basically there's, uh, between the fuel line and the tank, there's two parts. There's this plastic one, so the fuel line goes in here, right? And then this one just, um, basically there's a lock. You see how flimsy everything is? Like there's no... Uh, thread nothing this you remove this and there's basically a little bit of glue and there's a little seal in there and it just you open this push this and you push it in and it's a, a metal thing like a metal fitting that sits inside the tank so this plastic just snaps into a metal you know very very flimsy and I asked the guy I said can you install it because I don't want to mess with it I don't want to mess it up you know because if you don't install it properly, you will have a leak again, right? And plus, um, I, I knew that I, I, I want to do this, so I didn't um, fill up. But still, my fuel is like 50%. So I don't know if it's above that. So if, you know, if I un, un, open it myself, there's already a hole. This is the bottom one. The bottom, like there's two right above the other. So I bought two in case they break one. You know, but I really don't want to... I know it's very simple, right? But it's so awkward. It's behind the tank there. You know. I'd rather, you know. How much would they charge to install this stupid thing? It takes probably like two minutes, you know. I just don't want to have a leak. Fuel leak or air leak. And this is, you see, the same kind of like deal. Just like a regular Mac dealer. So these are, I'm guessing, all the 
bed trucks that are waiting their turn to get inside the shop and this one is much smaller than the one in Cambridge it only has five doors see the one in Cambridge has like ten you know and whenever you go to a dealer I'm always joking like you know when you see so many trucks like what is what does that tell you like why are all these trucks in here right so that means that they they all broken down so does it mean that these guys are doing a good good job repairing them <laughs> or is the truck itself is no good you know and that guy in volvo showed up a uh, guy with a kid and he has a flat tire and i heard them talking in french i think he has a quebec plate that black volvo over there pulls a super like multi-axle trailer and and i'm like surprised that guy see like he's not asking any permission he just stopped there blocked all those trucks you know see i went around and i parked here because i don't want to block anybody some people just don't care the guy came in parked his truck went across to the service counter hey i, I have a flat tire can you help me <laughs> anyway i think i'll just get to uh, woodstock i crossed the border and now i go so everything's cool so i'm still holding this uh drilling uh rig uh thing so i'm just i think i'm just gonna stop at woodstock and uh, let ta over there those wizards play with this these are only like 15 bucks canadian but still like this piece right tiny little piece is pretty much like what 15 canadian or like 12 us you know no wonder the truck my truck was 146 thousand it should be like two dollars you know made in china no it's already late you know what i decided not to drive to uh, uh woodstock just shut down in london and i think i'll do it myself you know i'll just because i'm thinking because of fuel uh the fuel still can be above that uh, thing Manitoba plate, so he has a two XL Jeep. Look at this monstrous two XL Jeep, and he has a flay box extension on his gooseneck, and then he has the same kind of like drop side rail trailer, three axle, and then in the back he has a two XL stinger or spreader or booster. <laughs> Now this is uh, what I call serious heavy haul, you know? Now what tires does he have? Uh, 275, 275, 70, 22, 5, just like mine. And it's hydraulic, hydraulic booster. So 5 plus 3, 8, 10. So the guy has uh, 10 axles. And this is our typical uh, V train. For some reason, the guy has only one tire on the front axle, and then he has three in here, and then he has one lift single, and the truck is a three axle truck. So, kind of like two short trailers, but you see them everywhere in Ontario. Very, very, very popular. Yeah, you see that crane in the distance? Uh, they are unloading a container right now. I am uh, near the airport. Yeah, that's the airport over there. You can see planes. Oh, the sun is so bright here. Hey, well, I'm still waiting over there. Yeah, the guy... The truck is still sitting there. I cannot go. I cannot back. I just wanted to say a few uh, pre preliminary things about the... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm still getting used to this uh, phone because the camera... 
It has two cameras. One is here, two are my fingers. So I have to look at the bottom left. It actually has two cameras. One, two, three. Okay, there's some kind of a delay in audio. I'm looking at my mouth. But anyway, so I set up, uh, that's what I just wanted to mention the, briefly. I set them up like this, and since now I'm in Canada, I'm using my... Uh, Jesus, it's so loud. It's traffic over there. Okay, now it's gonna start beeping. Yeah. But hopefully, because I'm using my headset, you sh it shouldn't be too loud. But anyway, so yeah, I set them up like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how they work together and this way so I'm gonna do a video comparing them and this way you'll be able to see exactly the differences but of course so just a quick uh, um, experience that I, I've had so far is that the tablet is much faster like I don't know why right it's the tablet is actually cheaper. I paid 299 US for the GPS. The tablet has nothing in storage. Well, maybe like 20 megabytes, right? Everything is on the internet, so it has to access the information online to find the route. And yet, probably I don't know. Maybe it has more memory, but I mean, it just doesn't it does not make sense. Why they put such slow processors and? Uh, so little memory in all these GPS's, you know, like I always say that the future is with internet enabled devices and the tablet is faster, but of course, you know, you have to pay every month for data, right? Um, and also what's funny uh, about TomTom, Tom, yeah, you can use it as a car GPS, like you choose the type of your vehicle. Uh, so if I, I tried uh, at the truck but I just set up regular uh, you know dimensions and, and weight so it was just sending me from Michigan yesterday I use it in the States um, but what I wanted to say is that oh yeah it on the box it says uh, lifetime map updates okay I understand that so you just uh, go to the website and you uh, download the the map updates which is user usually like pretty big file so you need to have good internet connection and I always hate doing that it's like three gigabytes sometimes can take like a day to uh, download that but the second the second feature on that box was oh now I'm dying too hot <laughs> the second feature was uh, uh, lifetime traffic updates and that's just honestly I did not expect this from Tom Tom, it's like a marketing gimmick because the the uh, the previous uh, units actually had the uh, traffic built in. What, what was happening? They have a FM receiver, and it was not it did not work very well because uh, you need a special. No, it's not FM. It's I think it's like AM. Basically, that information is uh, sent over the radio waves. And uh, it only usually would work where you are near a big town, like in Toronto it would work, somewhere in New York City, stuff like that, right? And it'll show you the traffic, like uh, slow traffic, fast traffic. So you didn't have to have any subscriptions, you didn't have to pay anything, right? But it was it was not very reliable, it was only major urban city uh, areas, but it was free. So now they say uh, free life, uh, lifetime traffic updates, and then I start reading the manual, it turns out it's you have to use your phone like what basically you activate the Bluetooth on the TomTom uh, -tom and and you act and you pair that with your phone and then TomTom -tom is using your phone data plan to download uh, the traffic you know so I'm not too sure that's such a good idea so basically um, you know it's data all the time you know so I don't. I just don't like it. I didn't activate it. I, I was just using it uh, for for you know mapping, navigation. Two things are happening after this. Uh, I emailed my boss. I said I need the rest of the day off uh, because I want to. I want to find the shop that can uh, install this. Right? And since they they will be already working on this. Right down 
down the street, so to speak, from this is the uh, fuel filter housing in my pump. And I don't wanna, like I said, I hate, I'm not gonna use the services of uh, Vision Truck Group except for parts, that's where I bought this. Unfortunately, in Ontario, it's pretty much the biggest dealer. You know, Mac and Volvo, like wherever you look, it's uh, Vision Truck Group. And I was looking and looking for an alternative, and I found one in Burlington, Ontario, which is about 50 kilometers from me. I called the guy and they opened till like, you know, midnight. I said, do you think you'll be able to do it? I said, I just need this. And then I wanted to take off my fuel filter because that's the wrong one. They gave me like a tiny small filter, it's supposed to be big. But I said, I want to replace the filter, give me the proper fuel filter. But I also, when the filter is off, I want you to, I want your mechanic to inspect the filter housing for cracks and also um, that air in the fuel system manual was saying a possible culprit can be the actual pump you know that hand pump if it's loose a little bit it can let air in and that's number three so what I want them to do is just uh, install this take the filter off fuel filter off inspect the housing for cracks inspect how uh, secure is the pump if it's leaking replace it if the housing has a crack replace it and install a bigger filter and also I'm meeting a guy in Burlington uh, has nothing to do with uh, trucking but I decided to upgrade my camera uh, because finally I found uh, what I'm good at and what I enjoy doing it's uh, wildlife wildlife photography so I'm getting a better camera that's uh, more suited for that kind of photography you know? Mostly a much better uh, autofocusing system and 10 frames a second. You know? But I'm not sure when I'm gonna get it. For now, I'm just uh, selling the camera. And the guy is meeting me in uh, Burlington at the photography store. Like he says, he had bad experience buying stuff online from private sellers. So he wants he wants us to meet uh, uh, meet at. Uh, at the same Henry store, but I bought mine at Cambridge, but he, they, they're all over the place, so he lives somewhere there, so we're gonna meet at Henry's in Burlington, because he wants to take the camera inside the store and let him check it out and uh, make sure that the receipt has the same number, that's what he told me, like the serial number, I said, well, I have the receipt, I have the box, we were like, why do we have to go? Well, I have bad experience, I, I had bad experience with this. I said, okay, sir. And now what's cool is that why now is a good time to oh, wow that was like two males and one female are walking down the street and I'm looking at one of them hot to focus uh, so many beautiful women in here because it's all lots of offices here you know corporate stuff and, uh, and I lost my my thought. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I'm doing for the rest of the day, and so now we'll be driving to Burlington and then make a slight loop back towards uh, the dealer and hopefully they will do this and I just hope and pray, you know, that this is the this plus the fuel filter housing and the pump are the, the only things that um, cause this, but I'm really suspicious of this because it's like really loose you know that hose in there uh, but why also I want to change the filter is that I noticed that uh, after these guys did the oil change after they installed that filter now every morning when I'm pumping I'm pumping much more you know so it, somehow it's definitely connected with that area of the truck uh, 